Sometimes you just want a daily writer that won't break the bank. Like I hinted at in the cold open, this pen is definitely meant for the person that wants to add an inexpensive number eight nib in a sailor looking body, but without the added cost of gold trim or more expensive resins. If anything, this could be a good potential penabling pen, but with my penchant for throwing caution to the wind and just buying the higher priced pens, why did I choose the Jinhao X159 to add to my collection? This was a two prong purchase. On one hand, Urban brought it up while we recorded episode 50 of Two Guys Zero Planners, and I was intrigued when I saw the $14 price tag and a pretty nice wine red color with a bit of burgundy flavor thrown in. I think the number eight nib was also a selling feature for me, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. What I can say is the nib did play some part. The second prong, well, I guess the third since Urban is one and price is two, is that I like spending in even numbers and I needed something pen or ink related in my Amazon cart to get to a nice round number. So mid recording, I may have purchased this pen. Well, okay, the pen is here, so I obviously bought it. And I think if you want a knock around pen for your collection or you want something that you can hand a coworker or friend without immediate dread of if they're gonna drop it, this is a good pen to get. So with that bit of backstory out of the way, let's take a look at the pen itself. First observation is that this pen does not feel as cheap as the $14 price tag would lead you to believe. At this price, I'm sure there are going to be the occasional QC issues, but I'm not seeing it on this pen. There are a few aesthetic things here or there, like this seam going down the body, or the abrupt angle change on the section flare, and the trim isn't as flush as you would find on a 1911, but once I recalibrate myself to this being a $14 pen, None of these issues are too egregious for me to say no. Now let's get this pen uncapped and take a look at that number eight nib. I like the two-tone that they have going on with this steel nib. It provides an air of sophistication without requiring the upcharge of 14 karat gold. The only drawback here is you aren't going to get the forgiveness of a gold nib. And once again on the aesthetics, the font that they use here for the F stamp sticks out like a sore thumb. I would have loved to see a better font choice here. Now we will be talking about the flow and feel a little bit later during the writing sample, but one last thing before we hit the KPIs and get to writing. I actually like the converter that comes with this pen. It is a good firm seating converter that holds a nice amount of ink and has good action on the piston mechanism. This is actually better than some of the converters that come with more expensive pens and are a total pain in the butt to fill. I'm looking at you, pilot. Now, normally I would compare a pen to my 1911 large stormy seas, but this time around, I figured I'd go ahead and break out the Pilot 845 instead. The 845 is a large pen in its own right, and this Jin Hao gives it a run for its money. Now when capped, both the Pilot 845 and the X159 are almost neck and neck with the 845 coming in at 146 millimeters versus the 147 millimeters of the 159. Weight wise, the Jin Hao is three grams heavier when fully inked at 28 grams and uncapped, the Pilot 845 is now three millimeters longer at 132 millimeters and is now the heavier of the two pens at 14 grams versus the 11 grams of the X159. This next part is normally what matters most. However, on this matchup, I find it less of a defining difference on these pens. The section of the Jin Hao is a full half centimeter shorter than that of the Pilot 845, coming in at only 14.5 millimeters. And in a roll reversal, the Jin Hao is actually two millimeters wider in diameter. With most of my pens residing in the nine to 10.5 millimeter range, this section is rather fat and much shorter than all but my Kaveco test pens and a couple of my Pelicans. I think where this pen is able to get away with it though, is in the threads themselves. These are some of the most unobtrusive threads I've ever felt in a section. So gripping back on this pen, is a little bit more comfortable and helps get the section length to be more in line with the Pilot and the rest of my pen collection. And if I'm being honest, I actually enjoy this fatter section a little bit more from time to time. Speaking of which, let's talk about writing with the X159. First thing I noticed with this pen is that the balance is very well done. I'm not finding the nib being lifted due to too much weight being on the back end, nor am I finding myself needing to lift the pen due to too much weight being on the nib. 
there are actually a couple more expensive pens in my collection that could learn from this. After good balance comes the quality of the feed and nib working together. On this pen, they are in sync with each other with Sailor Yamadori, I'm getting no hard starting, no skipping, and it's a consistent ink layer every time. This nib is also super smooth. At some point down the line, I will end up owning a gold number eight nib, but until that happens, this is a good starting point. I mentioned at the beginning that this is my daily writer, and I'm not kidding. I've cycled out four other pens in the last month since I've gotten this one, and this one has managed to stay a consistent feature. It will cycle through eventually, but that should tell you something. This $14 pen is able to hold its own with other pens 10 times more expensive. Are there better quality options out there? Sure. But sometimes you just want a cheap pen that gets the job done and looks decent while doing it. This is that pen. And that's gonna do it for our look at the Jinhao X159. If you like that video or found it useful, then hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.